and verse number 1. The scripture says, This know also in the last days perilous times shall come. Father, bless your word. May it, be, may it fall upon receptive hearts and ears. In your holy name, amen. His word will not return void. It will accomplish that which he pleases and prosper in a thing where two hath sent it. The word of God is quick and powerful. The word of God is what converted me and it will convert you. The word of God is a blessed thing. I'd hate to live in a world where I didn't have a Bible. And have what God's word to open up and read and pray. And when I begin to read the Bible, it's not long before I realize it's reading me. <laughs> Amen. I want you to notice the scripture says, perilous times shall come. Now, if you have, unless you're living in a cave, you're conscious of that right now. And I marvel because of what is happening before our very eyes. I've been preaching a long time. And we preach about the second coming of Christ. Folks, believe me. I believe in the soon coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. I have a number of reasons for that, but I just want you to understand this morning that there are, there are entities at work, and a lot of them are behind the scenes, and they're not what you see walking through the streets. Let me say this right now. What happened to that man in Minneapolis, George Floyd, is a horrible thing. Anybody that would condone something like that's got a problem. The man was crying out, I can't breathe. And, and, uh, and you know, this it's, humanity would have said, you know, get your leg off, your foot off of his neck or whatever. I don't know all the details. I don't guess any of us do, but I do know this. That upset me. I don't like that. I don't like that a bit. And nor do I like the idea of kicking a door down and no knock and walk in and shoot some uh, black girl. Shoot her to death because her, her, uh, her boyfriend thought somebody was breaking into the house and, and opened fire on them. You know, if, the, if somebody kicks your door down at 2 o'clock in the morning, what do you think? You're going to think you're being, you're being assaulted. And so the no-knock needs to be looked at very carefully. I believe before they hand out a no-knock warrant, they'd better do some real scrutinizing. Because innocent people, that's not the first innocent person that has died at the hands of that, uh, at, at that kind of warrant. And I had to say that, I want you to understand something. In this country, there have been cases, no doubt, of police brutality. There have been. And if you, don't, if you don't know that, it's because you're living in a cave. No doubt. They even admit among themselves that there are bad cases. And it's going to happen. And we need to understand that. And there are people out in the street right now, black folk and white folk, that are demonstrating and protesting that. And their protest, their demonstration is what we call altruism. It's genuine. It's from the heart. It's from, it's from, it's from being fed up with, uh, with, in many cases, an out-of-control police force. Yes. And we can understand that. But let's go a little deeper. What you're seeing in the streets now has been hijacked. There's far more happening in the streets in America than these folk, these good folks that are, that are protesting. They have a right to do that. Please, mis please understand me. They've got a right to do that. But what's going on is far, far deeper than that. We have an insurrection on our hands. We have people that are doing things out here that have nothing to do with protest. When you loot and when you burn and when you kill, and the kind of thing that's happening now, then you cross the line, you're no longer a protester, you're a criminal. And so this is the element that's out there. And I believe, that I, from what I see, that the criminal element is probably as large, or maybe even larger, than those folks out there that are protesting and demonstrating. Just the other day, they tore down a statue of George Washington. George Washington. I was taught when I came through school that George Washington was the father of our country. Given every respect in the world. He was, he was a warrior. He had I don't know how many horses shot out from under him in war. And George Washington, the famous photograph of him kneeling, praying, and, and, and all of that. And George Washington was quite a man, but he was a man. And he lived in a time that is different from this time. I would that somehow or another that we could get these people to understand that you do not judge a man by, by your standards of your culture of today. That you've got to see him in the culture that he lived in. You've got to understand that. 
And God help if they find out that the White House and the Capitol was built with slave labor. Are they going to tear down the White House? They're going to tear down... Here's what they're trying to do. They're trying to erase all of our history. And folks, we can't... We're not making excuses for some of the bad stuff in our history. Slavery is a horrible thing. I mean, if you're for slavery, I, I want nothing to do with you. You're, you're not my brother. I don't believe in that stuff. I believe if the Bible says if God make you a son, make you free, you're free indeed. Slavery, though, in 200 years ago, was during the times. And slavery was accepted during those times. A lot of things, which is an entirely different message that comes off of that, which Darwin, when he published his book, The Survival of the Fittest and of the Favored Races, produced in this country what's called eugenics. And even universities in this country were involved in eugenics. Watch eugenics. It is reprogramming and, 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 and breeding a different class of people. So there's an awful lot of guilt to go around. And you don't have to study and read long to find out that America's history is not pure. But go find me a nation that is. It's not out there. And if there ever was a nation on this earth that is a nation that gives you an opportunity, it's America. I've traveled around. I've seen a lot of this world. And I've seen parts of this world where people who want to better themselves, but because of their cultural problems or whatever, they cannot better themselves. Now we live in a, what's called a democratic republic. I thank God that it's a republic. Listen to what was published in 1928. An army training manual. This is concerning citizenship. This is straight from the army, 1928. Democracy, they say. Democracy is a government of the masses. Authority derived from mass meeting or any other form of direct expression. It results in mobocracy. Attitude toward property is communistic. Negating property rights. That's when you loot. You tear up. Attitude toward law is that the will of the majority shall regulate. This is 1928. Defund the police. Defund the police. And the attitude toward laws they will, that the, that is that the will of the majority shall regulate without restraint or regard to consequences. And then finally... Democracy results in demag uh, demagogism, license, agitation, discontent, anarchy. This is an army training manual concerning citizenship, 1928. In plain words, if it is nothing but a pure democracy, it's a mobocracy. In other words, the crowd rules, dear friend. What happens when the crowd says enough of Christianity? We're done with you. Out the door with you. What happens when that moment comes? You say, are you against a democracy? Not at all. When it is controlled and governed by a republic. What is a republic? You've got three branches of government. You've got a legislative, executive, and a judicial. All right? The legislature makes the law. The executive applies the law. The judicial interprets the law. Our founding fathers were smart. They established a government that is a republic that is governed by law. This is why we have the Electoral College. The Electoral College says that every state has so many votes in the Electoral College. Regardless of whether that state has 5 million people or 50 million people. What that does, and they're very smart in doing this, is to give to every state an equal voice in who governs that country. Because all that you have to have is a concentration of the mob and you no longer have the electoral college and the mob rules. You're watching mob rule right now. Mob rule, my dear friends, you don't want to live in it. Out there in Washington, in Seattle, which has been liberal for decades, they're reaping what they've sowed. They have 
cordoned off six, eight blocks in an American city. They've put up their barriers and they've named their place uh, Chaz or Chop or whatever. You can't get it straight from these people. But the whole idea is that we are against the police and we are against these rules and regulations and laws and fences. We're against all that. But my dear friend, they're walking up and down with AR-15s. They're policing the place. People are getting shot to death. They're getting raped. Everything else under the sun is happening. And they've got their walls up. And you have to go through checkpoints to be able to get in there. Y'all, are you listening to me? So, listen to what they've said. This is what these marchers have said as they march through the street. This is what they believe. Number one, we disrupt the Western prescribed nuclear family. Did you hear that? They're against mothers and fathers and sons and daughters. If you live in a country where they're against mothers and fathers and sons and daughters, let me out. You live in a jungle. They're going to tear down the very foundations of America. The Bible starts in the very beginning. A husband and a wife before a city was ever built. The home was the first thing God ordained on this earth. Thus shall a man cleave unto his wife for they twain shall become one flesh. That becomes the foundation of your identity. It becomes the foundation of cohesiveness. It becomes the foundation of order and civility. If you do not have the family structure, you're just out here wandering around and you have no purpose and, and, and you drop a kid here and you drop a kid there and you drop a kid here and who's responsible and who raises them and these kids today have no fathers. This is Father's Day, right? And these kids, how many kids in this country are growing up with no fathers? When I watch this group march through the streets, and I listen to them as they scream and as they yell, and I look at them and I think, now look at them. Most of them are from 18 to 30 to 35 at the most. They're young people. They're fresh from the school system in America. They're fresh from the classroom in America. What were they taught while they were in that classroom in America? What was their teacher taught? in that classroom in America. Why it does it surprise anybody that after 30 or 40 years, 50 years of kicking God out of school, no prayer, does it surprise you that you're reaping the fruit of Darwin? Nihilism. What is that? That is no beginning and no ending. No purpose in being here. These kids are marching in the street and they're brainwashed. I don't have a clue where they came from, where they're going. They live for the moment. They live by their emotions. Once you take a thinking capacity away from a person, they follow the crowd. They follow their feelings. They follow their emotions. Just the other day, they tore down the statue of a man who was a big abolitionist of the 1800s. They didn't know. They're just following their emotions. They don't have a clue. They don't know what they're doing. As somebody said, here's another statue. Let's tear it down. And down it comes. America is going through the throes of a complete change. Amen. Today, June the 21st, in parts of this world is the summer solstice. In other parts of the world, yesterday was the summer solstice. It traverses because you have such a distance between parts of the world. Right now, the summer solstice is a very important day to the occult world. Stonehenge, you would believe how it's lit up. Every kind of a pagan and a witch under the sun is coming out for the summer solstice. You see, this is when the day stops getting longer. The summer solstice the longest day of the year. Then it starts to recede back and starts getting shorter. So it's an important event. It's as big as Halloween. It's the summer solstice. The witches, the Luciferians are calling for more demonstrations on the summer solstice. Listen to this. We're calling on every citizen on earth to stand in support of the formation of the one world government. So on June the 21st, what's today? 2020. We're calling on every citizen of the earth to march all over the place in support of forming a one world government. 
Where does it start? It starts with you, how you can help create your own chapter in your town. Plan marches, spread the word, forming a one world government, so forth and so on. Help do your part to support. This was written by Luciferian. Who's Lucifer, preacher? He's a light bearer. That's who he is. That's what the word means. Light bearer. Lucifer. Lucifer's a Latin word. Light bearer. The message out here in the street among these people is that you failed. Christianity failed. The church has failed. You haven't done what you should have done. Your God has failed, therefore. And it's all been a pack of lies in the Bible. It's all a misrepresentation of the truth. It's a Jewish Bible written by a bunch of Jews. So, therefore, you are woke. You know what woke means? W-O-K-E? What does it mean to be woke? It means all of a sudden I wake up. I realize what's going on. I see the wrongs that I didn't see last week. I understand the real purpose of what's happening. I'm woke. All right? So the Luciferians step in. And they say Lucifer is your light bearer. Lucifer is the one that will give you the way. He'll show you the way. And they want to know the way. It's what one of them said. Listen to this. Respond to the demands of the people or prepare to be met with any means necessary. It's not a warning. I'm letting people know what comes next. It's not over. It's just beginning. I saw a sweat t-shirt. A guy sent me an email the other day. and He had a t-shirt. This fellow had a t-shirt on. He's out here marching with the, with the group. Here's what it said, and I'm paraphrasing. I don't remember exactly the words, but this was the message. Come back, Jesus, and we'll kill you again. You see, these people are not indifferent to your faith. They despise you. They hate you. The other day, a brother went up to this Chaz, whatever this place is over here, Chop Chaz, whatever it is in Seattle. He went in there, and he stood up, and among them started preaching a brother, love the Lord, man. And you talk about you talk about courage. He stood right up there and started preaching to them. They nearly beat him to death. They beat him up. They grabbed his throat and he said, I can't breathe. I can't breathe. They were going to beat him to death. For what? What was his crime? Preaching the gospel. Do you understand there comes a time when you no longer preach to them? You understand there comes a time when you no longer preach to them? I say it again. There comes a time when you no longer preach to them. Do you love those little children you've got there? Your son, your daughter, what are they worth? What's your family worth? What's the most precious thing you've got in this world outside of our Lord Jesus Christ? What's it worth? What's it worth to you? There comes a time when you're no longer praying for them. You do what you have to do. You understand what I'm saying? I think you do. I think you understand what I'm saying. In Southern California, Antifa. You know who they are, don't you? Antifa had gone into San Bernardino or some Southern California town, and they'd kick the windows in, they'd ride it and loot it and all that. They like to beat people up. Antifa's real big at beating people up. And so they went on further south, this little old country town. I thought, we'll just go in there, we'll wipe that thing out. Well, the people were waiting for them. And Antifa left out of there with their tail tucked between their legs. They got, they got beat up. They got beat up. You wouldn't throw your kids to the devil, would you? You wouldn't throw them to the dogs? Wake up. Watch what's happening. I don't know what's next. But I know what they have planned is not good. Do you remember when Hillary, just a few years ago, said it takes a village? Remember when she said that? Well, birds of a, fle a feather flock together, don't they? It takes a village, she said. Now, what do you mean by that? It takes a village to raise your child. In other words, the nuclear family of a mother and a father is not good enough. We need this outside influence. Listen to this. We disrupt the Western prescribed nuclear family structure requirement by supporting each other as extended families and villages that collectively care for one another, especially our children, to the degree that mothers, parents, and children are comfortable. All right? Now listen to their next statement. Same people, 
We foster a queer affirming network. Do you want your child to grow up in that village? When we gather, we do so with the intention of freeing ourselves from the tight grip of hetero, heteronormative thinking. That's the first time I've seen that word, but here's what it means. It means that it is a, heteros means different, all right? What is different, the normal is different. So here's their saying, we free ourselves from this tight grip and rather the belief that all in the world are heterosexual, so forth and so on. In plain words, they're saying, we are who we are. We're going we're gonna, to we're gonna march in our gay pride parades. We're going to celebrate this stuff. And you are going to bend and bow to our demands. And it's coming. You say, well, a preacher, all you got to do is get a mayor and a governor to do something about it. Do you know what the mayor of Seattle, Washington said when all this started? She must have been a uh, disciple of Woodstock. I mean, if you folks my age, you know, when I say Woodstock, you know what I'm talking about? She said, this will be a summer of love and peace. Talking about Chaz, Chop. Well, the other night when that person got shot to death, the love and peace went out the window. And the governor of the state of Washington, he's all in it. He's for them. You see, here's the thing. They believe that they can make a statement up there in Seattle, Washington, to the rest of the country and show everybody in this country how wrong we are by their little experiment. And they want the world to see it. And they're going to find out how wrong they are when they see it. Now this guy says, come back, Jesus, and we'll kill you again. Well, let me tell you something, mister. Revelation chapter number 19 and verse 11 says this. I saw heaven open, and behold, a white horse. And he that sat upon him was called faithful and true. And in righteousness he doth judge and make war. <laughs> his eyes were as a flame of fire. And his head, on his head were many crowns. And he had a name written that no man knew but he himself. And he was clothed with a vesture, dipped in blood. And his name is called the word of God. There's every reason to believe that when that horse comes back, there will be so much blood flowing that the blood will be upon the horse's bridle. And the armies which were in heaven followed him upon white horses, clothed in fine linen, white and clean. And out of his mouth goeth a sharp sword, that with it he should smite the nations, and he shall rule them with a rod of iron. And he treadeth the winepress of the fierceness and wrath of Almighty God. And he hath on his vesture and on his thigh a name written, King of Kings. And Lord of Lords. They expect you to bow to them now. When he comes back, they'll bow to him then. Make no mistake about it. He'll come back and it won't be in peace. And it won't be as the Lamb of God. It won't be as the shepherd. It'll be as the Lord of hosts. He'll come back. Why? Because, do look out here. Do you think this crowd is going to give up anything to the Lord God Almighty? He'll take it with an outstretched arm. He gave you a type of it in Egypt. When he reached into Egypt and he took his people out and he judged every god of the Egyptians. And how did he do it? He put blood over the doorpost and lentils. And he took hold of them and he said with an outstretched arm, he reached in there and he pulled them out. Well, thanks be unto God for his unspeakable gift. He's going to come down and he's going to shout our names. Maybe today. And we're leaving out of this place. We're gone. It's called the rapture. It is a mystery revealed to the Apostle Paul. And I am looking for that coming of the Lord Jesus Christ when he comes to rapture his church. The more that happens, the more I'm beginning to be convinced. We are nearing the second coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. Now, here's what one of them said a few years ago, 30 years ago, 40 years ago, somewhere in there. He said, we shall sodomize your sons, emblems of your feeble masculinity, of your shallow dreams and vulgar lies. 
We shall seduce them in your schools, in your dormitories, in your gymnasiums, in your locker rooms, in your sports arenas, in your seminaries. Has that come true? Yes, it has. Yes, it has. Here's a police officer, a Seattle police officer. I'll read this and I'll be done. He says, nine blocks of our city are under the complete control of these terrorists. Now, these are the words of the police officer, not mine. No joke. He said, this is unreal. No police, no fire department, no sanity allowed. They have an armed force patrolling, manning checkpoints and stopping cars and citizens at gunpoint. They are creating a currency, an ID system, a system supply system that includes food, water, ammo, and chemical weapons. They have access to the police precinct and have made it their headquarters. Our leaders are completely silent and the city council is completely complicit. Yet they have been on the front lines with the anarchists and yes, last night one council member led about 200 into City Hall. The warlord in charge of the new Capitol Hill Autonomous Zone drives a Tesla and has been arrested for drugs, guns, pimping, crimes against children and on a federal child porn watch list. He carries an AK-47 and has already started abusing people inside. And finally, the police officer says, you can't make this up. We have been castrated. There is no recovering from this. We can't go near the zone and have been warned by our department to stay away. We're only working for each other now. We have been in battles where these psychopaths have hit us with rocks, cinder blocks, homemade napalm, and even IEDs multiple injuries and then we gave up the precinct now the guns are out and police officers all over this country are resigning they're leaving their post they say we've had enough and they're resigning folks you better do some serious praying that they don't all resign you better do some serious praying because if that happens, we'll descend into Somalia where you have warlords and they have territories and there is constant fighting and killing and raping and looting. That's what can happen to this country. What do we need to do? Like I told Sunday school, we need to pray about what God wants us to do here at Temple Baptist Church. We need to pray. Start praying. Say, well, so-and-so, I'm not interested in what so-and-so's church does. What does God want to do here at Temple? Pray about that. Pray about it. We need to pray, folks. We're under, we're under attack. We need to pray. This is serious business. <laughs> we need to pray. Father, bless your word. Bless the folk gathered in the house today. Thank you for the opportunity that we still have free speech. They want to take it away. Political correctness would love to shut us down. So would Google. So would Facebook. So would YouTube. So would all of these social sites. They'd like to shut us down and close our voice for good. But Heavenly Father, you're the one that opens and you're the one that closes. We call on you because you can do it. And we trust you. We give you this church. I give you my life. I give you my loved ones. They're in your hands, Lord. And be glorified now. In Jesus' sweet holy name I pray that the Father may be glorified in the Son. In Jesus' name I ask it.